Ladies and gentlemen, Hudson County View live at Uncut. Obviously, I'm John R. Heinis, and uh, today it's going to be a bit of a somber episode. Obviously, we want to tell you the latest about these fatalities in Jersey City. Of course, six lives taken by these two shooters that uh, in an incident that's now being characterized as domestic terrorism and also a bias crime, and that's coming from New Jersey Attorney General Gubir Grayal. So we're going to, of course, let you see what our federal law enforcement and also state law enforcement authorities have been talking about this issue, as well as Mayor Stephen Fulop, as well as uh, Governor Phil Murphy. So we're going to get into that. Uh, certainly, we want to wish our uh, heartfelt uh, respect and condolences for those that are have suffered the loss of a loved one up during this time. Of course, uh, that includes our brothers and sisters in blue. Uh, as everybody watching knows, one of those deceased is uh, police detective Joseph Seals. The one positive thing we could say on that note is that there's been an overwhelming just groundswell of support. You know, that GoFundMe page is raised uh, as of this morning, it was about $223,000. So we'll tell you a little bit about how you could pay your respects next week for uh, Detective Seals and the rest of the Jersey City Police Department, uh, who of course are still reeling from this attack that's less than 48 years old. So, you know, we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about some of the victims. We're going to talk about what, uh, again, our authorities have been able to discover and what details they've been able to release to the public up to this point. So uh, again, a somber, very tough time for Jersey City, but we want to give you the latest. We want to make sure you're informed, so we're going to do just that like we try to do every week. For the time being, we're going to take our first break. We'll talk to you in a moment. It takes more than a state-of-the-art medical facility to make a great hospital. It takes a team of dedicated medical professionals. That's the Jersey City Medical Center, Hudson County's number one hospital. Medical teams consisting of New Jersey's top doctors, magnet award-winning nurses, and accomplished hospital associates, all committed to your good health. That's what you have at the Jersey City Medical Center. Make Hudson County's number one hospital your first choice. Visit us on the web at BarnabasHealth.org. Burns Brothers Memorials, Monuments, and Markers, 787 Tunley Avenue, Jersey City. Hudson County's only monument maker, serving all faiths and cemeteries. Design studio and launch inventory on site. Cemetery inscriptions and custom orders welcome. Burns Brothers Memorials, Monuments, and Markers, 787 Tunley Avenue, just south of Secaucus Road. Craftsmanship that will last for all eternity. Burns Brothers, Jersey City, Albert H. Hopper, North Arlington. Visit us on the net. Newport, the luxury waterfront community on the Hudson River, offers a quality of life you deserve in 10 high-rise rental towers with amenities such as the on-site Newport Path subway, light rail and ferry service, Newport Town Square, three playgrounds, dog run, upscale restaurants, retail giants like Sears, JCPenney, Macy's, and Target. Morton Williams Supermarket is just outside your front door. A health and fitness club, spa, skating rink, and medical facilities are also on site. NewportNJ.com Enjoy the New York skyline from Newport Town Square. Manhattan is just one path stop away or quick ride through the Holland Tunnel. Nursery and private elementary schools all on site. 12 screen movie theater at the Newport Center Mall. Want to visit Newport? Stay at the Western or Marriott Hotel. Go to NewportNJ.com for details. Newport has luxurious towers, great restaurants, shopping, New York skyline views, schools, playgrounds, a marina and yacht club, gym, spa, fine wine, fine living. It's incredible. It's you. NewportNJ.com. Newport. Live like you want. Hi, everyone. Hudson County View live at Uncut. John R. Hyatt is joined with Mark Businich. Mark, you know, obviously it's been a tough week. Thanks for yes, joining us. Of course. Uh, well, thank you. So, first of all, I mean, the magnitude of this whole situation, I mean, when it unfolds, you hear about a shooting in Jersey City. I mean, just nobody could have expected this, you know, just totally earth shattering for so mm. many people. So l let's play a qu clip that circulated online. Breaking 911 had this clip as well as many others on social media just to give you guys an idea of how, you know, just absolutely stunning and just uh, frightening, shocking, so many other words. L l let's just let the clip speak for itself. Thank you. 
All right, so with that, you know, let's talk a little bit about, uh, you know, exactly what is unfolding and, uh, you know, just, I guess, let's start from the top. So the two suspects, David Anderson, Francine Graham, obviously they're also deceased. A total of uh, six died in gunfire on Tuesday. That was at approximately 2.23 Martin Luther King Drive in Jersey City. The gunfire started uh, at approximately 12.21. I believe that was uh, the time mark, and that's about the time when, unfortunately, Detective Seals uh, was hit with gunfire that he didn't recover from. So, mm -hmm. you know, from there, obviously, it was about a four-hour shootout, and other lives were lost. Mm -hmm. uh, certainly, we want to pay our respects to Detective Seals, as well as uh, we can't forget about the other victims. Uh, we want to also talk about uh, Leah Mindy Ferenz, uh, Mashi Douche, uh, Miguel Douglas, who was also known as Douglas Rodriguez, mm -hmm. and... Uh, you know, and also there was a victim who escaped. So, you know, certainly very, very lucky to uh, be able to get out of that situation. So, I don't know, that's just the preliminary. We'll certainly get into more particulars as we move along today. Uh, but uh, I'm talking a lot, Mark. Uh, please just, just yeah, weigh no, in on some of no. this. Of course, John, yes. And as you indicated right at the start of the show, I mean, of course, uh, we give our, uh, you know, uh, condolences to the grieving families, both the Joseph Seals family and the the civilians' uh, families, the civilians who lost their lives at the kosher market. You know, it was, um, <clears throat> it, we attended yesterday's uh, press conference uh, by Attorney General Gurib Ger Grewal. I think I had a little trouble saying his last name uh, on Saturday's uh, story, and I was corrected by somebody on the, on the website, but I was made sure to uh, acknowledge that, yes, I did mispronounce his name at the time. Um, but, uh, you know, he had his press conference yesterday and today, and he talked about the, the um, um, the chronology of how these events unfolded, and of course, we, as many of us have read, and we report, and we, and you and me have reported, that uh, doc, you know, jo T Detective Joseph Seals was obviously, unfortunately, and tragically murdered when he was trying to approach the uh, the two uh, uh, suspects in relation to the possible their motive in the or their participation in a slaying and a and a Uber driver who was uh, tragically found uh, uh, bludgeoned in Bayonne. Yeah, correct. So the uh, the biggest news, I guess, out of yesterday's press conference, which was held at the Hudson County Prosecutor's Office at 595 Newark in Jersey City, biggest news there, uh, in my opinion, and I think a lot of people agreed with this, was that uh, a Bayonne driver, uh, Bayonne Uber driver, was found dead in the trunk of a car, and they were linked to this death. So those were the they're the prime suspects. You know, they haven't said anything beyond that. But we are going to show you a clip from yesterday's events that will hopefully uh, make this a little more clear. So we're going to just take a quick break from our sponsors and we're going to come back to that clip for you. The Jersey City Medical Center, you know it for its award-winning, life-saving ambulance service. It's also your health hub with health and wellness locations staffed with certified professionals all through Hudson County. The Jersey City Medical Center, here to help you with your healthy, here when you need us the most. The Jersey City Medical Center. Visit us on the net to learn more. Jersey City Medical Center, Robert Wood Johnson, Barnabas Health Facility. Let's be healthy together. Good Friend Self Storage in North Bergen, New Jersey is a fully climate controlled facility equipped with state of the art security, packing supplies, a refer friend program, and multiple loading docks convenient for commercial use. Located just off of Route 3 at 4301 Tunnelly Avenue, Route 1 and 9. Call 201 867 2444 or visit us on the web today. Good friend self storage. Let us be your good friend. Of everything we know, there is no ongoing security concern related to the events of yesterday. One thing must be made perfectly clear an attack on our Jewish community, or for that matter, on any community in what is by many measures, the most diverse state in the United States of America. And whether that attack may be here in Jersey City or anywhere in our state, that attack 
is, a, is an attack against all nine million of us who are proud to call ourselves New Jerseyans. At approximately 12.38 p.m., the Jersey City Police Department received a 911 call from an individual who discovered the body of Detective Seals. <coughs> Minutes later, at approximately 12.43 p.m., Jersey City Police Department personnel arrived in the vicinity of the J.C. Kosher Supermarket and engaged with the two suspects inside. A long, protracted shootout followed, and at approximately 3.25 p.m., a police armored vehicle broke through the entryway of the supermarket. And then at approximately 3.47 p.m., the law enforcement incident ended when the officers discovered the bodies inside the supermarket. As soon as the shootout ended, law enforcement began processing the scene, including numerous items of evidentiary value. Among others, we've obtained di digital and documentary evidence which we are currently reviewing for indications about the suspect's possible motives. We know that there is significant speculation about the shooter's motives. We're not in the position at this time to say definitively why the suspects decided to stop in front of the supermarket and begin firing and begin firing immediately. I implore the press. I know there's always a right during these incidents to say why. Speculation only distracts from the investigation. It takes all of our investigators offline to address that. And the media has our partners in this. We don't want to participate in those kind of acts. Following the event, the vehicle that the two uh, individuals arrived to the uh, location in was searched by our state police professionals forensically. Uh, they did locate in that, amongst other items that I won't be discussing, uh, a pipe bomb improvised explosive device. Uh, what I will say is it was examined, it's down at the FBI laboratory right now. It was an, a viable device, meaning it could be a device that would have exploded. Uh, it was, again, a pipe bomb, uh, bomb design. Uh, not complicated, but sophisticated in the sense that time and effort would be free. So, of course, that clip was, uh, it was basically a general overview of everything we knew uh, heading into, I guess, last night. Uh, this was them talking about, as you just saw, uh, talking about all the deceased. We were uh, also having a conversation about the FBI's involvement. You saw Special Agent Charge Gregory Erie talking about that uh, improvised explosive device, a pipe bomb. And, uh, you know, the point I made earlier, though, uh, regarding the Uber driver, that was Michael Rumberger, 34 years old, found dead in the trunk of a car on December 7th. And uh, his daughter, you guys may have seen on our site, started a GoFundMe page. They are the two prime suspects, according to our attorney general. So, you know, it's a very interesting twist that I don't think a lot of people were expecting. So on that point, you know, Guwal simply said, the two suspects who are deceased in this case, Anderson and Graham, are prime suspects in the Bayonne Uber driver killing. Mm -hmm. You know, we uh, found uh, a little more commentary about that today, but not a whole lot more. Uh, so that, again, remains under investigation. And uh, the Hudson County Prosecutor's Office had involvement into this case uh, ahead of these shootings. Uh, so, Mark, anything else uh, on that? Um, <clears throat> well, regarding John, the, um, it was interesting to hear what the AG had to say earlier today about all the firepower that was recovered after the investigations started, uh, which he reported on starting yesterday, yesterday's press conference and today's press conference. Multiple handguns, a long-powered uh, uh, rifle. And um, <clears throat> of course, they, the cup, the, some of the handguns that were purchased by Francine Graham weren't purchased here in New Jersey, but in Ohio. Right. And, I'm going uh, to stop you short there, Marcus. Sure. We're going to do that after the break. Before that, I just want to point out the fact that heading into today, the only one of the few people that was calling this a hate crime was Jersey City Mayor Stephen Fulop. So we want to show you mm -hmm. a clip that was showing you how adamant he was that this was an obvious bias incident. So uh, we're going to look at that clip, and then we're going to take a break. From our standpoint, there's no question that this is a hate crime and anti-Semitism should be called out aggressively and firmly, immediately for what it is. And anything other than that is a disservice to anti-Semitism. Um, Jewish grants and Holocaust survivors who immigrated to this country because it's a place of tolerance. And like I said, we need to be aggressive in calling it out for what it is. Um, I know some people will say that we should review things and take our time. But when you look at the facts of what transpired yesterday, it's difficult to argue anything other than that. Um, we know that uh, they traveled over a mile deliberately and slowly to this location. We know that they bypassed um, many targets on the way. We know that they bypassed targets immediately near the store. We know that they took out long rifles across the street after selecting this location and coming here. We know that they fired aggressively into that place. 
we know that they posted favorable sentiment on social media towards anti-Semitic groups. So from my standpoint, I want to be just very, very clear on how we feel here in Jersey City, and we want to be transparent with our community on what's happening. Um, we want to be quick with information, and we want to tell them what's happening because I think that they deserve it, and if they're going to trust us, um, we need to be forthright with information. Um, so I want to be clear on why we call it a hate crime and what we believe and why it points in that direction, and waiting does a disservice to anti-Semitism, anti-Semitic sentiment, it does a service to anti-Semitism in, in the sense of not calling it out. Consumer Carpets, 3408 Kennedy Boulevard in the Jersey City Heights, your one-stop store for residential and commercial floor treatments. Carpeting, linoleum, tiles, laminates, hardwood floors, area rugs, remnants, all major brands, all in stock. Free estimates, same-day installation. Consumer carpets, it's saving, selection, installation. Credit cards and debit cards accepted. Financing available. Consumer carpets, price to fit your budget, installation to fit your schedule. On the net at ConsumerCarpets.com. Consumer Carpets, Jersey City, 201-792-2712. Panapinto Properties, Jersey City. Shaping the workplace with state-of-the-art office space and an address your company desires. Building residences that define your home environment adjacent to all modes of transportation. On-site parking available. The right address, the right lease. 201-521-9000 or visit on the web at panapintoproperties.com. Panapinto Properties, building Jersey City for everyone. All right, Hatsukati View live at Adkat, Jad Arhaitis with Mark Businich. So I just wanted to make sure that everybody saw that clip before we started talking about today, Mark, because mm -hmm. Today, uh, like I mentioned at the top of the program, it's now being classified as a domestic terrorism and a bias incident. So, be, but uh, before we get into the meat of that issue, we want to also, of course, as you uh, astutely noted, there was a number of weapons recovered in the case. So let me just uh, go over sure. that. So according to uh, Gubir Grayal, it was uh, David Anderson using an AR-15 Mossberg rifle, while Graham appeared to be using a 12-gauge shotgun. and. Investigators have also recovered a 9mm Ruger pistol, a 9mm Glock pistol, and a 22 caliber Ruger MK4. So mm -hmm. obviously there was some serious firepower there. We already talked about the IED, uh, and they apparently recovered some other materials that they did name today. So Mark, uh, just I know I cut you off early, so what was going to be your point there? No, that uh, was simply saying, saying John, that um, all that firepower, uh, and they mentioned that uh, Miss. Uh, Florence Graham, uh, she uh, purchased that uh, particular, um, her particular weapons uh, in Ohio. And um, again, just the, just incredible the amount of firepower that they had. And um, of course, you know, we heard from the Attorney General yesterday as far as how long the shooting had gone on for. And luckily, again, and if it hasn't been stated already, but which he made sure the Attorney General and some of the other uh, police authorities that were in attendance at the press conference, John, who they gave, um, they gave a lot of credit to the Jersey City foot uh, patrol officers that were nearby who were able to engage the suspects at the time that they did because, as the Attorney General mentioned numerous times during the press conference, it could have been far worse. Right. He said those officers did a tremendous job in preventing a further loss of life and further injury. So, you know, again, certainly our uh, thoughts, prayers, blessings with them. So as far as uh, how we led this new classification, this new development of the case, we'll let the Attorney General say it better than we can. So we're going to show you another clip that happened just uh, less than two hours ago, once again at the Hudson County Prosecutor's Office. Regarding the motives of the shooters, we have identified a number of social media accounts that we believe were used by the suspects and purport to espouse certain viewpoints. We're currently working to determine the authenticity of these accounts and to gather other evidence that we can use to corroborate these views. But based on what we have collected so far, however, including based on recent witness interviews, we believe that the suspects held views that reflected hatred of the Jewish people, as well as a hatred of law enforcement. We are still working to determine how they selected their particular targets for these attacks, specifically both the J.C. Kosher supermarket and Detective Joseph Seals. There has been considerable reporting that these two suspects are linked to the Black Hebrew Israelite movement. We have evidence that both suspects expressed interest in this group, but we have not definitively established any formal links to that organization or to any other group. 
based on the available evidence. We believe that the two shooters were acting on their own, but we will continue to pursue all leads. And while we're on the subject of uh, the bravery of law enforcement that you know had to encounter this tragedy, we don't want to forget about Sergeant Marjorie Jordan. Certainly, uh, a very, very impressive uh, feat, to put it mildly. You know, there was gunfire. One of her uh, colleagues got hit with a shot, and she ran back towards the gunfire to pull him out to safety. And uh, you know, thankfully, she was not injured. But really, really, just uh, very powerful stuff. You know, uh, very. Impressive to say the least. Uh, fair to say, Mark? Oh, definitely, John. What an act of bravery on her part. Yeah, I mean, really, really impressive uh, stuff. I mean, there's only so much we could say, but boy, I mean, it's not something you see every day. And uh, the New Jersey State Policemen's Benevolent Association agreed. You know, they put that video out on Twitter and uh, they put the caption So many brave heroes on Tuesday. Here are two of them. A Jersey City officer confronts the killers and is immediately shot. Sergeant Marjorie Jordan abandons her cover runs into the hail of gunfire and gets him to his feet in safety. Courage and bravery by so many. Uh, well said. And an interesting thing also about uh, the sergeant was just a month ago there was a fire uh, in the same neighborhood and she was actually the one that called it in and helped start evacuating those buildings. So it sounds like an officer that Jersey City is very lucky to have. Indeed, John. So with that, we're going to take uh, another commercial break. We'll be back in just a moment. Rama Jewelers, located in the Lyndhurst Shopping Center at 413 Valley Brook Avenue, Lyndhurst. Come for all your jeweler needs at Rama Jewelers, where you will find a fine selection of necklaces, earrings, rings, and bracelets. Choose from one of our complete sets, our many signature items, or find the perfect engagement ring. Come on down, that's Rama Jewelers at 413 Valley Brook Ave, Lyndhurst. Call 201-939-5784 or visit us online today. Introducing the MyJCMC app, powered by Practice Unite. The free MyJCMC app puts the power of healthcare at your fingertips. Go to the concierge for access to referrals, scheduling, and appointments. See emergency room wait times and get directions to Jersey City Medical Center health locations. Read the latest JCMC news through their social media feed. Find a doctor and more. The MyJCMC app, we belong to you. Hudson County View live and uncut. John R. Heides with Mark Businich. So, guys, we also want to make sure that you're aware if you'd be interested in paying your respects to uh, our fallen police detective, Joseph Seals, want to just give you a little bit of information there. So, if this is something that you think you would want to attend, uh, obviously, it, I think a lot of people are, it's scheduled for Monday at the McLaughlin Funeral Home, 625 Pavonia Ave from 2 p.m. until 8 p.m and also the funeral will happen at 10 a.m. Tuesday at St. Aidan's Church, and that's 800 Bergen Avenue in Jersey City. Uh, I think it's no secret, Mark, that this will be extremely well attended and uh, law enforcement from throughout the state, of course, to pay tribute to this uh, fallen officer. For sure, John. And I mean, as you said, I mean, it's just incredible how much money has been raised up to this point. I mean, you just reported this morning uh, over 220,000, 223,000 to be exact. And, you know, uh, regarding the, if I, if I may, John, regarding those GoFundMe pages, um, you know, in this case, obviously, it's proven very pivotal and very instrumental in being able to raise all this money for a fallen officer. It was interesting to hear yesterday during the press conference when uh, the U.S. Dist uh, U.S. Attorney for the District of New Jersey, Greg Carpenito, remember, he was pretty angry, really, and he wanted to make, he was pretty angry, and he made sure to say to the media, that he found that, that it was reprehensible or that there were persons that he said were reprehensible because they were creating all these fake GoFundMe pages to uh, asking for people to donate their hard-earned money to the, to the fallen victims as well. I don't, I'm not, specific, not, not sure if it was specifically related to the, uh, Joseph Seals fundraising, but that there were players there uh, on the Internet trying to raise money um, um, uh, in, in a... Basically just to fatten their own pockets. Yeah, exactly, and that's what he said. They were just looking to, you know, kind of profit off the tragedy that occurred in Jersey City. 
Yeah, so uh, we've gotten a lot of, I'm glad you brought that up, Mark. We've got a lot of text messages, emails, phone calls. I mean, certainly I have about which uh, GoFundMes are legit. I mean, I could certainly tell you that the two that we have on our website, the one for Joseph Seals, the one for Douglas Rodriguez is 100% authentic. The one for the fallen detective came straight from the Jersey City Police Officers uh, Benevolent Association. And the other one was verified uh, through a family member. So. You know, if you'd want to help out, and uh, you know, we didn't speak at length, but Douglas Rodriguez, one of the victims, uh, is also has a GoFundMe up there, and they've had several thousand raised. I believe it was about uh, twelve thousand and change as of this morning to help with uh, funeral expenses for him as well. Uh, certainly, there's a lot of tragedy that uh, we, we've hardly seen in that instance. You know, he leaves behind a daughter, he leaves behind a wife. So, um, you know, any generosity would obviously go a long day during this difficult time. So. With that, we also uh, want to make mention, I think, that the Attorney General this morning, Mark, gave, uh, gave some nice praise to uh, Police Chief Michael Kelly. Um, he was at both press conferences, unbeknownst to some, uh, because he just, you know, decided to take the backseat for his uh, state and federal partners. But uh, they seem to be really pleased and really just uh, complimentary of the job he did. I mean, obviously, with a uh, department under fire for four hours, I mean, uh, th one could only imagine the number of things happening, the number of things going through your head. But just uh, allow me to read a quote that uh, spoke a little about that. And uh, again, from this is from Gubir Gruyal. And he said, one thing remains abundantly clear, if not for the leadership of Jersey City Police Department and Chief Michael Kelly, the outcome would have been far, far worse. Mm. So, you know, I know you mentioned something to that effect earlier, Mark, but just sure. really wanted to hammer that point home to people. Uh, and, uh, you know, certainly this was a group effort when we're talking law enforcement. I mean, certainly wasn't just Jersey City, it wasn't just the FBI, but uh, we had, who of course played a huge role, but the NYPD was here, right. Port Authority Police, Bureau and, of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms was also available. Yeah, so a number, of, yeah, a number of state, federal, and local partners all played a huge role in making sure this thing was contained as, uh, as quickly and as efficiently as it was. So certainly mm. they all deserve praise. I mean, we couldn't name them all, but certainly thank you to everyone in law enforcement, to all of our first responders that made sure that this outcome uh, wasn't worse. You know, certainly a lot of people deserve a lot of uh, love and a lot of respect for what happened that day. Uh, yeah. So, Mark, any, any closing thoughts? Well, John, as you said, I mean, there was no shortage of com commendation for uh, Mike Kelly. And, you know, we, and we've been, we reported on this, uh, the number of active shooter drills that the Jersey City Police Department has conducted with the SWAT team, with the Hudson County SWAT team, that is, and all Jersey City Police officers. And um, it looks like that training has, um, um, has paid dividends. Yeah, I think that's, uh, that's probably a fair assessment, Mark. So with that said, ladies and gentlemen, you know, stick with us. Obviously, the coverage is just beginning. I mean, I, certainly there's a lot of details, a lot of questions that people have. We want to answer them, and we will continue to do so. I mean, it looks like another busy day today. Tomorrow probably will be no different. We're going to give you the latest updates as quickly and as efficiently as we can. So in closing, all I'm going to say is stay strong, Jersey City. Thanks for reading. Thanks for watching. Have a great week.